All right. Another episode of the Josh Cast. Let's begin with IBS. Josh Cast, brought to you by IBS. Probably not a good idea to take a six hour plane ride. All right. So, uh, I, uh, you know, I don't even know if it. I got, I did get sick to my stomach this morning. And it was because I overate last night. I ate more, I was full, but I still wanted to eat. Uh, why did I do that? Why this doing that? I think because I was depressed. Why was I depressed? Because Josh. Um, anxious. I actually, you know, actually, it might be more anxiety is why I did it. Uh, I keep coming up, or I keep trying to come up with, uh, here's the problem. So, uh, my, uh, health insurance has gone up and just on top of everything else, I, uh, getting older and things are getting more expensive and the economy is, uh, falling apart, etc. And it seems that my plan to ameliorate this is to hope that my podcast takes off. I am not sure that this is sound financial advice. I definitely know that this is not sound financial advice. But nevertheless... That is the plan. And my mom is telling me, well, it's never good to be desperate. This is something she learned from her artist musician friends. It's never good to be desperate because desperation kills your art, Josh. Desperation kills your art. Which to say that to somebody who is already anxious, very helpful. So what is the focus? How how do we get there? Well, the hope, I guess, is that people will find this podcast funny. And it seems that people react or, or laugh the hardest when I simply describe the horrors of life. So maybe that's maybe that's just the theme of the podcast. How how are things going wrong today? Even right now, the way I'm talking is very uh, it's very measured. I can oh I feel it. Yes, I did. It's very measured. I'm I'm censoring myself, or I'm 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 thinking too much about what I'm going to say instead of just saying what I want to say. And what do I want to say at this point? I'm looking at a Pizza Hut Wing Street restaurant. Is restaurant really the correct term for this? A Pizza Hut, Wing Street? I mean, is it... Is it a restaurant? I I know... I know... Allegedly, food is served there. But... <laughs> talk about IBS! And doctors don't understand the cause of IBS. Well, I, eating at a Pizza Hut, Wing, Wing Street might... Uh, might be a definite cause. I think it's just the intestines going, really? Real seriously. That's I did you I remember I used to eat at Pizza Hut with my dad. We would go there because at one point they had uh, land before time toys. That's that is what drove me to Pizza Hut that one time. And I remember the pizza at Pizza Hut um uh, it was an it was an interesting taste. Did I like the pizza? The, the pizza that I remember really liking in Denver was the the Bonnie Bray pizza. They were great. I think they're still there. They had a they had an interesting uh, way of making pizza. I've never tasted any other pizza like the Bonnie Bray pizza. I'm very uh, I highly recommend the Bonnie Bray pizza to anyone who is in the Bonnie Bray area in Denver. And if you're not, then, well, then you're missing out, period. Pizza Hut pizza, 
it's been years since I've had Pizza Hut pizza, so I, it's not fair for me to comment on it. I just remember it was one of those pizzas where you take a bite into the pepperoni and underneath it there's a pocket of um, superheated heat. That's what I remember about it. It's, you know, it's, it was a bit dangerous, that pizza, in terms of the heat allocation. Was it the best tasting pizza? At the time it wasn't. Perhaps they've turned it around. I don't know. Yes, I do know. At the, I don't know if they've turned it around, but I know at the time of all of the pizzas, I probably would rank it. It, it would probably be Bonnie Bray Pizza and then Papa John's and then Pizza Hut. But we stopped going to Pizza Hut because they stopped having toys that I wanted. Really, if a place has toys I want, that's... I'm there. That's maybe that's the problem with Anthem Health Insurance right now. If they had, if if they offered, if they said we're raising your rates, but we're also going to send you a Enterprise NCC one seventeen oh one E model, I'd go. Oh, you know what? That's a fair trade. You always get me with the toys. Where does he get those wonderful toys? what the Joker asked in uh, the Tim Burton Batman. Where does he get those wonderful toys? Well, the answer is he spends years building them. And, well, that's, that is the answer. He spends years, he built, he built them himself. I think he built them himself, sir. I was being rhetorical. And that's the worst Joker impression you'll ever hear. The worst Jack Nicholson. I'm the Joker. I don't even know. That's just random evil person. Where does he get those wonderful toys? I'm sure he probably builds them. I'm sure perhaps he custom orders some parts. Perhaps had some weapons training at some point. Perhaps... Uh, purchased one of those military books on how to build weapons. Well, you asked, so I'm answering the question. That's where he gets the wonderful toys. I want to see a Batman movie where... A Batman movie where it's the movie is serious, it's not a comedy, but where he is wearing the spandex. I just, you know, for once, I feel for the actor. And I want, I want a Batman actor who's comfortable. I don't think that's too much to ask. I want to see a Batman in sweatpants. That's what I want. That might be scarier to criminals. Oh, he's wearing sweatpants. Uh-oh. He's a tad unhinged. Because I don't know about you, but when I see someone wearing sweatpants in public... I'm always a little bit, just a little bit more concerned. Because I question whether, you know, this person really cares. And if they don't care, it's, you get to a point of not caring. I think to myself, well, what if he, you know, blows up the building? That's my concern. I don't know. I I feel like whenever I've seen footage of, of people doing crazy, violent, terrorist things. They're never wearing tuxedos. You only see that in a Bond movie. They're usually, they're wearing quite comfortable clothing. Because I suppose you'd have to wear comfortable clothing knowing that you were going into a, a situation where you were going to do crazy things. In fact, I feel like sweatpants is what they wear. They do not dress up for the insanity. So I'm always concerned when I see that. And speaking of fear, I, I almost saw Avengers last night, but I, I was about to go buy the ticket, and then I thought, I, don't, I, don't, I looked at the seating chart, because it was assigned seating, and I got anxiety. Because I thought, oh God, where should I sit if, you know, if, there's a, if there's a violent incident? Where's the safest place in the theater to sit? 
And then I answered my own question by saying, ah, in my apartment watching it on Netflix six months from now. So that's, I gotta say, that's, that's sad. That that's where my mind goes when thinking about, should I go see a movie? That's, that is sad. On the other hand, I'm also, as I get older, hating people more and hating being around them more. So it's sad, but at the same time, I, there are other reasons why I don't want to go sit in a theater. I don't want to be near other people's neuroses, which I know that's the pot calling the kettle obsessive compulsive. I know this. But I don't want to hear other people chewing. I don't want to hear other people sneezing. I mean, nothing really bad has happened the last few times I've seen a movie. I like to go at off hours where there's not too many people there anyway. And so, you know, no one is usually sitting around me, which is great. I hate when people are sitting behind me. I have this fear that they're going to stab me with something. That is my fear. I'm going to be stabbed to death in a movie theater. Somebody is sitting behind me, and I don't know, they just snap, and they take out a knife, and boom, that's it. I'm gone. You can add that to my list of fears. Sometimes, I forget that I even have these fears, and then I'm reminded that I have the fears. I should really keep track of them. You get older, you forget things. That way I don't have to walk all the way to the theater. I can look at my list and go, oh right, I'm afraid of this, and just proceed home. Well, that was good. Was it good? Are we good? How are we doing? How are we doing right now, people? Fear of getting stabbed in the theater. Yes, I've come to see if you sell wonderful toys. Excuse me? Yes, I want I want the same gadgets that Batman has. I'm afraid of being stabbed in a theater, for instance, and I'm wondering if you have some kind of protective neck brace that I can wear, and perhaps if you can if you have, if you sell something that's like a gun but it shoots a bullet that, that goes behind me and a little bit to the left where someone might be sitting in a theater that might stab me. Aren't you the Joker? Yes, I am I am the Joker. Ha 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 That laugh really didn't, you didn't really seem to be into it that time. I'm not, you know, sometimes I'm not always into it. I don't feel like being on right now. I just want to buy wonderful toys. That's why I'm here. Do you sell wonderful toys here or not? Well, this is a toy store, so we sell toys, but I, I think what you're describing are specialized weapons and tools designed by a vigilante, probably with some kind of a strong cash flow. And we don't, we don't have that here. I mean, the closest thing we have, I mean, I could get you this, you know, this is a, a Nerf gun. Do I look like I want a Nerf gun? No, you don't. I'm, I'm trying to illustrate that the Nerf gun is the closest thing we have to what you're looking for, and that's how far away we are from having anything that we're looking that you're looking for. It's an example of what you don't want. Let me take a look at the Nerf gun. You're not going to be impressed with it. Well, I don't, let me see. Let me see it. Oh, so there's a suction cup at the at the other end of the Nerf gun. Yes. I mean, how well does it work? What? The suction cup. How well does it Well, you know, it well, if you shoot on a smooth surface, and you're about, you know, five feet or less away, it will stick. But if it's any farther than that, it, it doesn't, it, it loses power and it just kind of bounces off. I see. $30? Well, 32 with tax. Really? $32 for this? I, I'm, I'm not in control of the pricing. I've just, I just worked the counter here. $32 for this Nerf gun. I don't know. I don't know, man. I feel like you're just going to steal it from me anyway. Well, yeah, I am. Obviously, I am the Joker. I steal. I don't. 
I don't buy Nerf guns. I steal Nerf guns because I'm the Joker. The question is, can I steal something that's this worthless but is also overpriced? Like stealing it because it's overpriced, that says something. I like what that says. But by the same token, I can see myself being the object of ridicule and others saying to me, why did you steal that? It's a Nerf gun. You're not even, it's not even practical for what you're doing. It can't kill people. Unless I figure out a way to kill someone using the Nerf gun. That would be very Joker, I think. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Is this leading to you killing me with a Nerf gun? It's leading to me trying to kill you with a Nerf gun. We don't know if I'm going to succeed. That's why I want to try it out on you. That's, it's just great. Thank you. Perfect. And that was a scene that did not make it into the Batman movie. I found out where he got the wonderful toys. Oh, really? Where was it? Costco. You're kidding me. No, Costco. They have everything he's looking. He has. Well, we should go and, and get toys of our own. Oh, yeah, already. By the way, I figured out how to kill someone with a Nerf gun. 